everybody. Uh, after watching uh, Wooden Potatoes do a really cool tour of his account, I was inspired to do one of my own. Uh, hopefully people won't see this as like an excuse to brag, because a lot of the stuff I'm going to show isn't really that amazing, actually, and it's not really anything brag-worthy. Like, I'm not, like, super hardcore at achievements that I have, like, any crazy achievements unlocked that are going to impress people. And as far as, like, the legendaries and stuff I have, there's people that have way more. So it's not really bragworthy. It's just kind of like a summary of, of where I'm at before this expansion hits. Um, philosophically speaking, I've spent most of my time in game working on improving my characters and my experience with dungeons and stuff. And I haven't really gone out of my way to grind out any Slayer achievements or Weapon Master achievements. Um, mostly because I would much rather have characters that have perfect gear and best in slot everything than having those achievements done it's it i i don't think i could play a character that didn't have at least what i would consider to be best in slot gear it would annoy me and i would probably just log off and play a different character that did have best in slot gear that way i wouldn't run into a situation where i was playing on a character with crappy gear but i had some slayer achievements so i definitely would not spend any time going out of my way to get achievements especially achievements that i will get through the normal course of gameplay eventually at some point. Um, so the first thing to talk about is log on screen. I have uh, the world completion medal. I've done four world completions and I'm halfway through with my fifth. Um, needed most of them for legendaries. I'm not really working on a legendary now even though I'm going for world completion because I just want to have uh, Gift of Explorations done in case uh, when the expansion comes out, some of the new legendaries are amazingly irresistible and I have to gr grind one out real quick. And I don't want to have to do world completion. I want one kind of ready and waiting. Um, then I've done personal story at least long enough on three different characters to get the Whispers, Vigil, and Priory banners. Um, and then I've equipped a legendary treasure or two in my time, so I got that badge. Um, Realm Avenger, I think this is how many World v. World kills you have. I don't know what the relevance of that is because, I mean, I haven't achieved any special title. I'm not sure why it matters. And PvP rank, I'm rank 69, uh, which is a pretty sexy rank, I have to say, um, in PvP. Uh, and I fluctuate kind of between doing, like, hardcore tournament PvP for, like, a week where I do that just, like, a ton, like, every day, and then not doing any PvP at all. Besides, like, one hot join a day for my daily, and uh, it's just, I get burnt out pretty quick on the Conquest game mode, so hopefully Stronghold's pretty sweet. But yeah, my rank could be a lot higher if I actually uh, force myself to do tournament PvP every day, but I just really don't have the motivation to do it. So that's it for the logon screen. I will uh, talk about each of my characters individually, since that's where I put a lot of my time. Uh, into the game, but before I get to the characters and stuff, I want to go over my achievement panel. Alright guys, so talking about achievements, I have uh, right now 22,151 achievement points. Uh, about 10,000 of those come from dailies, about 2,600 from monthlies, and the rest of the permanent. As you can see, uh, one thing that I thought was interesting compared to Wooden Potatoes is his permanent Achievement points were way high, and his dailies and monthlies and stuff uh, weren't weren't as high. Relatively, kind of re a reverse situation. Um, I find that people that PvP a lot have really high permanent achievement points because if you PvP on a bunch of different classes, it's pretty easy to start getting uh, the achievements done for PvP. Um, plus, there's people out there that like many of my guildies that go out and do every living story. I don't do every living story thing. I only did it recently to get the Sinister Gear unlocked, but all the other living story stuff, all the way back to the very beginning, I never cared about really doing the meta achievements or getting any of that done. Um, so as far as, like, let's look at World v. World first. I uh, don't have too, too much special here. 6,900 kills in World v. World, which is actually surprisingly high considering that I don't really World v. World very often. Um, I don't really have uh, anything special here other than that I'm on Blackgate uh, generally, although I'm stuck on Jade Quarry because of World v. World mapping and I can't transfer back. 
And I did participate in all the tournaments just enough to get the uh, get the uh, achievements done there so I can get the remote. The rest of the stuff, not really too far into it. I'm not a hardcore worldview worlder. I don't aspire to be. And I definitely don't ever want to get uh, that many yaks done to finish that title. Um, so not really much noteworthy in World v. World. Good PvP. Um, I've gotten a. I've got the only champion title I've gotten in PvP is Legionnaire. I played Warrior and grinded that out. That wasn't too bad. And then I have uh, a couple. I have the Illusionist done. I used to before Warrior got buffed with Cleansing Ire and Berserker Stance and stuff. I was actually main Mesmer in PvP. And that was what I focused most of my time in PvP on. And I'll kind of actually show that in a bit. Um, the rest of the stuff, I haven't done, done too much. I started playing like one different class every day because of the new dailies. So I have nine wins as a ranger. Not really that special. Um, uh, 40 something wins as a thief. 30 wins as a guardian. But really nothing, nothing that amazing. Um, just because I've had, they've almost forced me to branch out thanks to the new dailies. As far as champions go, I don't really play much other than warrior in tournaments. Um, I do have like 15 wins on an on a mesmer, 12 wins on a guardian, and I think I've won one match on a thief in the tournaments. Uh, but and I'll actually show my PVP panel. You can see I've done 77% of my games on Warrior, 15% uh, on Mesmer, and all the rest, little slivers here. Um, ranked games, I've played 459 tournament games, which is like nothing compared to people that are hardcore. Uh, won 255, I've got a pretty decent winning percentage. Not really like amazingly high, but I think it's like high 50s, which is good for me. Um, and that's basically it for the PvP side of, of the achievements. N again, I'm not really main PvP -er, so none of that stuff is super impressive. Um, as far as fractals, I have almost every achievement done. I think the only one I haven't done is defeat subject six without causing it to gain maximum stacks of overcharge possible without, or whatever that is. I've never done it. I don't know how to even do it. I haven't even thought about it. Uh, I think you you would probably have to go out of your way to uh, get this t one done. And I've just never gotten around to it. But all the other fractal ones I have completed. I'm actually close to the Aether Path meta. I think I need three more. Uh, the grounded one, I could probably do that if I just had a team that would let me sit outside the room while they did that puzzle. So I could get that. Um... Kill Formans were first without disengaging or dying and then finish off his entire crew. I'm not sure why I haven't done that. I could have sworn we have done that before. I don't know. I guess I didn't get it. And stay cool. Complete the Ooze Font puzzle without getting hit by flames. The Ooze Font puzzle is literally the most annoying puzzle. Well, no. I'm sorry. The Grounded puzzle is the most annoying puzzle. But the Ooze Font puzzle is pretty annoying. And I'm just happy to be done with it. So I don't really go out of my way to avoid the flames. I'm just... Whenever we successfully finish the Ooze, I'm just so happy and relieved that... I don't really go out of my way. Um, and then dungeons. Of course, I have Dungeon Master completed. Uh, I have all those titles. And Hobby Dungeon Explorer, I have repeated 735 times, which is actually probably on the low side. I know there's people in my guild that have already gone, uh, done a 1,000 Hobby Dungeon Explorers. And I know there's people in other guilds that are well into the four figures as well. But uh, one thing that was interesting is I didn't get my Dungeon Master title. I forget which path it was that I was missing, but it was just like a completely random path that early on in the game I had every other path done except this one random path, and I never bothered to finish it. And during those days, we were going really hard doing Cough 1 farming and doing COE farming for the uh, Lodestones, and... Had I had Dungeon Master finished, I probably would have ticked off Javi Dungeon Explorer another 50 to 100 times. Um, so I'm a little bit behind 
because of that. But yeah, for the most part, it's 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 a decently high number compared to what I've seen from some other people. Um, go through some of this junk Slayer titles. I have a lot of the Slayer titles finished just from normally playing the game. You can see anything related to a dungeon, I've got that Slayer title done. Uh, fairly close to uh, killing crustaceans and minotaurs, but the only ones that are left are ones that are kind of annoying to get. There's stuff that you'd have to basically do open world. And I'm actually proud that I have 19 giants killed, because there's not really a ton of giants out there in the game, so it kind of shows that I've uh, managed to kill 19 giants, which is pretty impressive, considering how few there are. Um, hero panel, I have done uh, whatever this is all. I think it's like story mode. No, no, this is about hearts. Eh, whatever. Boring stuff. Um, tradesmen, I've leveled up all the crafting things. Uh, so I have every crafting thing leveled up. Um, Agent of Entropy. I have repeated Agent of Entropy 378 times, which is a lot, I think. Um, I've gone, I probably would have more, but I've gone through periods where I didn't salvage anything, where I merged or trading posted everything I got. And then I've gone through other periods where I just salvaged everything. And, uh, so I guess the number seems about right. But, um, yeah, so that is it for that. Explore. I've actually got a lot of the stuff. Then they added a bunch more. I did, like, all the regular explorers and they added all this stuff and I just am not interested in, in going back and finishing that um, weapon master uh, you can kind of tell what classes I play the most the ones that I have actually finished uh, the rest of these I don't know how I don't think mace master is gonna get done or pistol master anytime soon uh, unless I started really playing uh, engineer or, or, or whatever a lot more um, the thirst slayer achievement is interesting I was actually trying to finish this, and I was making good progress. I I had the karma to buy it all, to buy all the alcohol and finish it. But then they nerfed karma in dungeons. You used to get like 2,100 karma for every dungeon path. And so I had like 6 million karma, so it didn't really matter. But then when they nerfed that, karma got a lot harder to come by, and I couldn't bring it uh, upon myself to spend uh, a half a million karma to finish Thirst Slayer. Plus, it's a lot of clicking, and I don't want to use an auto-clicker, so I never got around to finishing that one. Um, bosses, I have all the boss ones. That's pretty easy. Triple Trouble, we finished all those. Uh, I was there when Blackgate and Attuned were doing the worm for the first time, so that was super fun. Um, to Quaddle, I finished all that. Um, so that's basically it for the PvE stuff. Um, so now collections. Basic collections. I have all the dungeon ones completed. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of the other ones are. I got the Alpha Crafter because that was pretty cheap to do. Um, the Halloween stuff, that was pretty easy. Luminescent stuff, as you can see, I have very little interest in unlocking the luminescent stuff. I think that armor is ugly as hell. And so I'm not going to be getting any of the luminescent stuff done. Um, and then all the rest of this junk, like I just, I'm just not interested in it. I don't care. I'm sure there's people out there that are like way into getting all this stuff done, collecting the spoons, or whatever. The only spoons I have are the Tequadal, Fractal, and World v. World. I'm just, I'm just not going to go around and, and buy all these from all the different heart vendors for one achievement point and a bag of junk. Uh, not particularly interesting to me. Um, but as far as the basic collections go, yeah, I did want to get the Dungeoneer title, so I, I got most of these. And the reward you get is pretty good. You get the, the unique stat earrings that you can't get anywhere else. Uh, even if I never use those stats, it's nice to have them unlocked. Um, so that's pretty good. Uh, as far as rare collections go, Dungeoneer completed. That is the hard one, I think. Uh, I know a lot of people have gotten their Dungeoneer title through PvP. Because it's just way easier to slowly get the stuff by doing the reward tracks than it is by actually doing dungeons. But uh, as you can see from my PvP experience relative to my dungeon experience, uh, quite a bit of this was actually done in dungeons. Uh, one thing I will say is that my HOTW token, or HOTW Dungeoneer, uh, probably about a third of it was completed 
from uh, uh, the PvP track. And then Ascended Accoutrement. That's pretty awesome. I have all the Ascended skins unlocked. I crafted a set uh, for all... I have crafted a heavy, medium, and a light set. And you got actually a really good uh, reward for that. So that was worth doing. And you get Buku AP. So this was like a really cool uh, collection to do. The other stuff, just not particularly interested in. Like Exotic Hunter. Like, this is an expensive thing, man. Like, uh... And what's sad is I've had, like, I know I've had a Komali Sacrificial Dagger. I just never, I just, I think I got it before Wardrobe and got rid of it. Um, and yeah, I, I just, I'm not going to pay. This would probably be like a thousand gold to finish this. And the reward you get, Karma Converter, I don't know. It's not really that attractive to me. Um, and then as far as Black Lion Weapon Collections, I'm not really ever really attracted to many of the Black Lion skins. I did get the pistol for the tormented and the fused weapons. I got the pistol and the sword because they go cool with my thief. And I think that's pretty cool to have those. Um, but yeah, that's it for uh, collections. Um, and so that's basically it for my hero panel and the achievements and stuff. So what I am going to show now is go through my wardrobe and see if I can point out anything interesting that I have there. All right, so my account wardrobe. Um, I haven't really, I'm not trying to compete with Wuzito for uh, most amount of skins or anything like that. Um, I'm not particularly interested in collecting every single skin in the game. I don't really go out of my way to get the special back pieces that you get from uh, every living story thing for a while, especially early on in the game. Like every update would have a, like, a new back piece that people would have. Um, so I didn't uh, go out of my way to collect it. Most of the stuff I just got from playing the game normally. Uh, one thing I would encourage everyone to get is the Wraith Mask, which is the Necro Starter Eyes. Even if you're not going to play a Necro, you should probably roll one with the pick the eyes to get the skin, unlock the skin, and then you can just go ahead and delete your Necro. Um, because this gives you the glowy eyes. I use this glowy eyes on basically all my light armor classes. It's one of my favorite skins. So I highly encourage everyone to get that. Um, going down through the armor, there's really nothing special or noteworthy. Um, back pieces I unlocked, I didn't like I said, I never really went out of my way to be this back piece collector like some people are. Uh, I do have all the fractal back pieces unlocked, which is cool. And I have holographic dragon shattered dragon wings. I don't even remember how to get that. I think it was it was some update. Uh, yeah, I have the elegant can guild back banner that you used to be able to get with pvp rewards um but yeah overall nothing really too amazing as far as the armor web armor stuff goes um so i'm gonna go to weapon skins um point out anything cool i have i have as far as swords go bolt obviously is pretty sweet bonetti's rapier um the zap skin or the the zap skin is a crystalline blade which was awesome in guild wars one it was like one of the rare drops, in, one of the rarest drops in the game was the Crystalline Blade. Uh, going down through here, as far as hammers go, I don't really have any sweet hammers. Uh, the sweetest hammer I have, I guess, is Entropy. Um, I think I also have the Guild Heroes Hammer, Mistforge Heroes Hammer, which is a pretty sweet hammer, I guess, uh, if I had to use one. Uh, longbows, really nothing special there. I do have the Dream Thistle Longbow. That's probably like the rarest skin I have uh, as far as longbows go. That's pretty sweet. I don't really use it though. I really uh, prefer for the most part to use my Fractal Longbow. There I also have the Wings of Duena which pretty much everyone has because when they announced the changes to the PvP rewards everyone went and got uh, their Wings of Duena uh, as fast as they could. Uh, I should have also probably done the shortbow version too, but I didn't think about it. Or not, maybe not the shortbow version, but whatever. There's There was a, an equivalent shortbow you could get that was pretty sweet. Um, shortbows, I don't really have any special skins. Uh, I have the fractal one that I use for the most part. Um, axes, uh, corrupted axe, I really i am a big fan of. Even the Ara axe is pretty sweet. Um, I have Frostfang, fractal axe. There's really cool axe skins. Um, a lot of the axe skins are kind of crap, and they're tiny, and they look like little hatchets. 
Not really sweet axes, but some of them are actually really awesome. As far as daggers go, I really like daggers. Um, I have like the jade daggers even, which I don't even use. I was using these for a while on my necro. It was like a gem store dagger. Uh, it was pretty sweet. Um, but once I got fractal daggers, and then once I got incinerator, I kind of never looked back uh, at any of the other dragon skins. Um, dagger skins, I'm sorry. So yeah, that's basically it. Great swords, of course, everyone loves great swords. I've unlocked a bunch of the ascended skins just because the colors are sweet. Like the white one is sweet. Uh, I have Eternity, Twilight, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Fractal Great Sword. Full Fire's Essence. Um, one interesting story is before I got Dusk as a drop early on in the game, I had no intention of ever making a single legendary. I thought that they were just like insanely out of reach and I'd never have one. So when I was very new to the game, like first month of the game, I saw this weapon, Full Fire's Essence, and I was like, I gotta have that. So I grind, 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 did a lot of Cough 1 back in those days, or Cough 2 maybe even in those days, and saved up and got the Full Fire's Essence. And this was like my main greatsword skin for a while until I made Twilight. And I don't really even use this anymore on any of my characters, but it's still a sweet skin. And it's cool to have it uh, still in my wardrobe, hanging out. So uh, even though it's been retired and I've moved on to bigger, better things, um, it's, it always has a place in my heart as like the first prestigious item I've gotten in the game. As far as maces go, you can't really compete with the moot, although the Corrupted Cudgel is pretty sweet. Um, that Shatterstone one is also a sweet mace, but or S Shiverstone, I'm sorry, but I don't have that unlocked. Um, I probably should, just because it's cool, and it goes with Frostfang, but I already have the Corrupted Cudgel, which is close enough, and also goes pretty well with Frostfang. Um, I think I unlocked this mace, because it was actually really sweet looking. The, this Ascended skin, uh, the white actually looks really sweet. Uh, pistols, uh, I, I can't ever find a pistol that I like. The Fractal Pistol's okay. The fuse pistol's okay, but you have to have like the whole fused theme, otherwise it looks stupid. Like if you just had that, I don't know, that's lame. Uh, rifles, really nothing jumps out as special there. Uh, Scepter, I have Meteorologicus obviously unlocked. Um, really nothing special. Um, so yeah, that's basically the rest of the weapons. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, so one thing I will show is I'll search for Fractal, since they're not going to give us a collection anytime soon. I'll go through. I have most, all but three of the Fractal weapons unlocked. I have Sword, Hammer, Longbow, Shortbow, Axe, Dagger, Greatsword, Missing Mace. I can't believe it. I'm a main warrior and I'm missing Mace. Uh, pistol, Rifle, Scepter, Staff, Focus, Missing Torch. I have Warhorn Shield, Missing the Spear, and I have Harpoon Gun and Trident. Um, I'm hoping in the expansion, when they say they're going to give us greater rewards and open up higher levels, that it won't be very long until I fill in these blanks. Because this is one collection that I would actually really like to fill in, and it would be really nice to have all of these unlocked. Because these are probably among the coolest skins in the game. And these skins are actually so cool that if I had had this whole collection unlocked before Legendaries, I probably would have never made any Legendaries, because I would have been happy with fractal skins for everything um so yeah i can't wait to finish this and hopefully in the expansion they will eventually give us an actual collection that is tied to some uh actually worthwhile amount of achievement points and when you get it finally finished you'll get some like crazy good reward because it is it's this is a grind to get even what i've gotten i couldn't imagine being finished and getting like no reward like there should be a pretty mega award attached to this collection um so yeah that's it as far as the wardrobe goes next i will go through my bank uh and we'll talk a little bit about what i have in there um so the first tab is mostly like uh boosters and gem store stuff basically anything anytime i get like a gem store thing from the daily uh, i just throw it in here i keep a lot of stuff on my warrior but uh, for the most part, the stuff I don't use like 
really, really often. I will just throw in here like metabolic primers. I'm not really ever gonna use a metabolic primer and black line salvage kits, just keep those around. Um, I have a black line ticket until I'm waiting for them to actually come out with something awesome for me to spend it on. And I have nine scraps, so I'm only one scrap away from having another ticket. Uh, next tab is where I keep my red ring, or my Berserker extra rings, my Mystic Salvage kits. Uh, I have 73 tomes of knowledge with my Revenant's name and my level 20 scrolls. So between my level 20 scrolls and my tome of knowledge, my Revenant is ready to go already. I have 43 pristine fractal relics. I know p tons of people have way more. If I had never wasted, like I spent a lot of relics over the course of months on rings for my characters when I didn't have extra rings. And there was probably like a year period where I would double click these and salvage them for regular relics simply because I needed back pieces. And if I had just been saving these up, I'm sure I'd have stacks of them like, like everyone else has. But for the most part, uh, I've just recently started saving them. So I'm up to 43. I have 133 potions of PvP reward. I was using these for a while, but I kind of decided that I wanted to start stacking these up in case uh, they come out with new reward tracks that have really cool rewards, uh, like unique rewards. That way, when they do come out with a new reward track, I don't have to grind out PvP. I can just mash through these uh, potions and get all the rewards unlocked. Um, the next tab is just kind of like miscellaneous living story stuff that like I may or may not someday like the Madri I just held on to everything Saving these armors because they have that you get from South Sun that have strength runes. I don't know if I will you, you can't salvage these and you can't like do anything to get the strength rune out of them yet Hopefully someday they'll be able to so I'm just holding on to them in case that ever happens um, I have my butter overflow. I save all my butter drops for some reason and I have tons of butter and I just hold on to them and There's certain foods that I don't always want to keep in all my characters inventories But I do use them on occasion like I use ghost pepper poppers a lot in fractals for the chill on crit Because uh, there's a lot of bosses that get way easier when you can keep them perma chilled so I save those for for fractals and then I keep my extra Omnum Berry Ghost here just for lifesteal and crit food. Next tab, I have just random crappy uh, world v. world things. I have like spinal shards, yada yada yada, Reci sinister recipes that I don't need. Um, I keep my Mystic Clovers and my extra Obsidian Shards here. Um, when I craft, when I get ready to craft Legendaries, this tab will fill up with more stuff to make Legendaries. Um, I have a Takadal's Horde that I haven't done anything with because I don't really know what I want to do with it. I have Mistforge Heroes weapons. I have the Staff, the Focus, and the Dagger. Here, I don't really have a use for these skins. I guess I could salvage these, um, but, yeah, whatever. Um, the next tab, I have, like, Fractal Weapon and Armor chests that I don't really have a use for. Um, I was thinking of making, like, a set of Knights or Soldiers... Or even Celestial for my Guardian uh, for Fractals uh, for when I need to hold aggro on particular bosses. But I haven't really been playing my Guardian in Fractals anytime recently. So I haven't wanted to crack these chests. I'm just thinking maybe I'll save them for a rainy day. Um, then here I have all my Sinister gear for my Warrior. I have the full Ascended Sinister armor. Sinister trinkets, uh, the Ascended Sinister weapons, Giver's Longbow, and the food I use on it. Um, I don't use this build enough to really justify keeping it in my inventory, and it just takes up a lot of inventory space, so I just leave it in this tab and I pull it out when I need it. Next tab is my Imperial Fragments and Bloodstone. I've actually been burning through these pretty decently thanks to my Star of Gratitude. Um, next tab I have extra Berserker Earrings that I've read from characters where I've used assassin's earrings and retired these. Um, I have three pieces of heavy armor, assassin stats ascended that are extra. This is random like outfits and tonics and stuff that I don't want in my inventory. This is all like silver waist stuff, this tab. Like I keep my extra bandit crests here um, and the Mordrum parts. I have uh, an ascended focus that I have no use for. All my characters that need focuses have them 
So this is kind of like just like an extra that I had for making Minstrel. I have my Karmic Circle Logic. When I do low-level Fractals, I bust this out and put it on my character for the extra 15% Karma. Because low-level Fractals are actually really sweet in terms of Karma gain. Um, and I have extra Runes of the Aristocracy. In case an emergency ever happens, then I need to make a con condition damage build. Um, and then this tab is my World v. World Warrior stuff. It's just Rabid gear um, and Rabid weapons and uh, Rabid accessories. So I got that. And then I keep over here. These are the trinkets that you get from the Dungeoneer. Uh, these are like earrings that have unique stats that you can't get anywhere else. Um, most of these stats, again, are kind of useless. I guess the soldiers' ones, I could see someone using someday. Um, but for the most part, these are useless, except for the sinister or the uh, the assassins' ones, which I'm using on all my characters. But yeah, these are unique and they're hard to get and they're expensive to replace. So they're like sort of like a collector's item trophy that I hold on to. And then I have a, bank, a blank empty one that I save for special projects. It's like my temporary like work in progress space. Um, so that's it for my bank. And uh, now I'm going to finish up by going through all my characters and uh, talking a little bit about each character, what they have, what they do, and, and, that, and that'll be the uh, end of this. All right, so first up, I'm going to go through my characters, uh, explain what they do, what I use them for, show their gear, and maybe any interesting stories that come up. Um, the first one up is my Asura Engineer, uh, which I created just recently with the change to dailies. Um, it basically exists only for me to play Engineer in PvP. Um, I've never actually done any PvE on this guy, as you can see by the fact that it has ze literally 0% map completion, which is something I pride myself on. Um, basically, just because Asuras are OP in PvP, and I didn't want to use my Norn NG in PvP, uh, because it, it's kind of ugly and I don't like it. Um, one thing that's interesting about this character is you notice it's level 45. I've intentionally kept her at level 45 so that she can open the PvP reward boxes uh, because you get the lower level mats if you open it on a lower level character. And it gives you uh, wool and cotton and linen rather than gossamer and, and higher level stuff that I, that I can get from plenty of other places. Um... I didn't really put any great thought into the armor and weapons since I really play this character for like five minutes once a week. Basically has, I just skinned a fractal rifle and, and went with the ascended uh, clothing for this character. Uh, not really that special. As far as the inventory goes, I don't really have any of the extra bags unlocked. I don't even have bags in there, period. And it's just got a bunch of junk. Uh, I only really, like I said, use this for PvP. Um, so next up, we'll go into my Char Thief, which is one of my most hated characters. But interestingly enough, this was the second character I made at launch. Um, after launch came out, uh, this character, I, I, for whatever reason, I was enamored with the idea of having uh, an Asura warrior who was the smallest character possible who would be doing like this crazy big damage uh, I like the idea of like this tiny little guy doing crazy big damage and then I liked the idea of a max size thief char who's supposed to be sneaky and stealthy but he's like this gigantic lumbering thing don't ask me what I was thinking these were stupid ideas um, and I'm glad I don't have that now um, in retrospect I understand that both of those ideas were completely dumb. Um, the one benefit of this, and it's the only Char character I have, is that I needed a Char for the Dungeoneer title, or not the Dungeoneer, the Emperor title. So I had to make, I had to have at least one Char. So this is the one uh, that I have. Um, that way I could buy the T3, T2, T1 armor on it. Um, I want to express too one reason why you never see me play this. I hate playing this character. Uh, the animations, I think, are stupid. A Char Thief is just terrible. Don't make one. It's really bad. It's just really, really bad. Um, I hated playing this character so much that I actually thought I hated playing Thief. Um, but later on, I made a Silvari Thief whose animations I really like and whose T3 armor I really love the look of. 
and I enjoyed playing Thief a ton. And I realized it wasn't Thief I hated, it was this character. And this this awful Char character. Um, and if I can stress one thing, if you might not have picked it up, is don't make a Char... Don't make a Char anything. They're terrible, they look stupid, and they're not fun. Um, one reason he's still around is because I learned very early on in my Guild Wars 1 career with the birthday stuff... Never delete a character. You're better off buying another character slot than you are deleting a character. Uh, because the birthdays get more and more valuable as time goes on. So never delete a character. Always keep them around. Also, this... Uh, when Ascended Armor came out, this is my only... Ascended gear, weapons and armor. This is my only character that had Huntsman and Leatherworker at 400. So I kind of needed him to get to 500 for those professions for crafting. So, he is still around uh, for crafting purposes. One uh, weird thing is that I've actually done map completion on him. It says 99% just because they've added new stuff uh, since then. But I have done map completion on this character. Mostly because when I needed to make Bolt, I didn't have any other characters who had World v. World mapping done already. And he had. So I uh, used him for world completion. And believe me when I say it sucked. Even though Thief is easy mode in world completion, it sucks just because I had to do an entire world completion on a Char Thief, which was terrible. So yeah, that is it for this character. And we'll move on to the next one. All right, so the next character up is my Silvari Elementalist. Um, in a very similar way to the Char Thief, I pretty much hated playing Elementalist. Um, and I did not enjoy it at all. And that is until I got an Elementalist, my human, whose aesthetic look I enjoyed. And then all of a sudden, now Elementalist is one of my favorite classes because it's so fun. Basically, I never found a light armor look with this character that made, made it awesome and made me feel like playing. Um, right now, I don't, I literally don't do anything with it. It doesn't have any gear and I'm I don't even like logging into it to the point where I won't even park it at a rich iron node for farming reasons. Um, I just hate this character just almost as much as I hate my Char Thief. Um, but like I said, the lesson I learned from Guild Wars 1 is never delete a character because even if you hate it and it sucks, it will be a birthday present generator which could down the road be really valuable. Um, but this is definitely a retired character. And it's a shame because, look, I have all the bag slots unlocked. It would be really nice to have those bag slots unlocked that I could give to, say, my Revenant when that comes out. But, uh, unfortunately not. Um, so, moving on to my next character. It is my Necromancer. Uh, the Necromancer is the third character I made at launch. At launch, I made a Warrior, a Thief, and the Necromancer. Um, in Guild Wars 1, my uh, fir very first character at launch was a Necromancer, and I was planning on it being my main. Um, but it turns out that, just like in Guild Wars 2, Necromancers were pretty garbage at PvE until way later in the game's history when they got uh, later bu big buffs. Um, and in Guild Wars 1, I switched to Elementalist as my main class um, before also rolling a Warrior, which is like my second main. So I sort of learned my lessons in Guild Wars 2, and I rolled a warrior first and knew it was going to be my main just because I know ArenaNet's history of buffing and making warriors awesome and making necromancers suck. Um, I still made the necromancer, though, in hopes that some awesome build would be found that would unlock their potential and they'd be sweet, um, but I guess we all know how that turned out. Um, I do have decent gear on it right now. I, uh, I have full exotics, at least, with Scholar Runes. Um, if I had infinite gold, I'd probably buy strength runes for it, but it'll have to live with Scholar for now. Um, I, I'm really... I have it equipped. It's good to go. Like, I could play it, but there's really just no point because it's not fun. Um, maybe someday in the far future, there'll be, like, some sweet balance patch that makes Necros awesome and, and will motivate me to go and get my Ascended gear done on my Necro. But uh, until then, I will uh, be keeping this guy on the bench and you probably won't be seeing too much from my necro uh, but incidentally I do have all the bag slots unlocked um, and just has random gear on it nothing super special um, so we'll go on to my next character 
which is uh, my Asura Warrior, which is basic. This was my original main at launch. This was the very first character I rolled. Like I said, I was very much in love with the idea of this tiny little guy running around doing crazy DPS um, in this tiny, super small package. Um, I liked the idea of a little berserker warrior running around doing crazy good damage, um, being the small size character. In retrospect, I realized it was dumb, and I realized it was dumb when I went to uh, craft a twilight, and I got a twilight, and it looked like a uh, toothpick. Uh, on the little Asura, so I was not happy with that, and that's when I decided to, to give in and join the female human uh, master race. And basically this guy's goal now, he basically sits around in PvP and is my PvP main. I use this guy uh, whenever I do tournament PvP or like daily warrior uh, PvP. Um, but this guy has a pretty cool history. I have all the bag slots unlocked for him. He's got like pretty crappy gear PvE wise now. I robbed all he I retired him long before Ascended came out. Um, but yeah, this character has a cool history. Um, if you watch some of Strife's like old dungeon guide videos from ancient times, you'll see this guy running around in those videos uh, playing warrior. And uh, so this character has like some sentimental value in that regard. Uh, in that he uh, has just been around a while and is actually uh, featured in some videos way back in the day. Um, one thing I had planned for him was I was going to get him like full soldier's gear and make it like my World v. World Zerg tune. But I really never do that. I don't go into World v. World and I don't Zerg. And I don't want to get on team speak with the World v. World commanders and probably have to listen to them and do all that. So I've never actually bothered to do that, even though it's something I think would be cool to do. Uh, it's just not something that's ever come up, so I've never done it. So right now, he's basically just here for PvP purposes. Um, so that is the last of my characters that uh, I consider, like, minor players and bench warmers. And now I'll get into sort of, like, my actual characters that see some, some use. Um, so here is my Silvari uh, Ranger. Uh, this is the only ranger I have. Um, I think I, the only reason I even made a ranger was because I needed to do some, like, tutorial achievement points, and I needed a ranger for that, so I rolled this ranger. Um, it also helps that I really, really like the Silvari T3 medium armor. I think it's one of the best armor sets in the game, and it just looks awesome with how glowy it is. Um... So yeah, I, uh, I went with the Silvari Ranger for that purpose just because the armor and everything and the look looks really good. Um, as far as gear-wise, it has basically full exotics with Ascended Trinkets. I don't really do much dungeon play with it. If I really cared, I could uh, gear it out more, but it's just not, not going to happen. I don't play Ranger enough. Um, his main job now is whenever uh, it's daily Ranger winner in PvP, I will play Ranger a match and get my win on ranger and this character is like the best node miner in the game it's either at the uh brisbane iron node or it's at the uh the uh platinum node in timberline so yeah it's one of the better miners in the game and i think it's a really sweet looking character i, I love the look and that makes it uh somewhat playable so it's probably the best dressed mining character in the game as well um, moving on, I'll talk about my human Mesmer a bit. Um, this is the character I've probably played more or almost as much as my warrior. This, like, for a while I would have considered Mesmer to be my second main, um, but not really anymore. Uh, I may, back when the old dungeon meta was three warriors, one Mesmer, one guard, I really, really enjoyed playing Mesmer in PvE. I felt that Mesmer was sort of like this uh, really cool control role, and I thought it was really nice having a uh, temporal curtain in order to group the mobs up and, and do all that, and I felt that there was just like a lot of like uh, 
like tactical play with the Mesmer that was really rewarding as opposed to like the Warrior, which was sort of just like there for DPS in those days. So uh, I really enjoyed playing Mesmer and I played quite a bit of Mesmer. And also at that point, uh, Mesmer was my PvP main and I was uh, playing Mesmer every day in PvP, but then Warriors got Cleansing Iron, Berserker Stance, and Warriors became amazing in PvP and the rest was history. Um, for the most part, this guy's parked at a mining node. Uh, doesn't really do too much. However, I do play this character in Fractals a bit. Um, I think Mesmer is really powerful and useful in Fractals. And so I will always play uh, Mesmer in Fractals if I get the chance. Um, as far as the character's gear goes, uh, it does have full ascended armor, uh, which is very expensive. It has full ascended weapons. Uh, well, actually, some of them are exotic, but most of the weapons are ascended. Um, and uh, I don't know, I think it's a pretty sweet, and it's got uh, assassin's earrings. So it's a fully ascended character. It's ready to go. Uh, maybe if Mesmer's ever got buffed a little bit more and they replaced Guardians in the meta, I would be, I'd be happy with that. I, I don't mind. I love playing Mesmer. I think it's fun. Um, so yeah, that's it for my Mesmer. Uh, it's one of my fully ascended tunes, and I have all the bags unlocked, and he's got good gear, and I want to play Mesmer more. So ain't it? Make Mesmer better, and we'll move on to my next one. All right, so my Guardian uh, was made around the same time as my Mesmer, and for basically the same reasons, because Guardian was, like, right up there with Mesmer as, like, one of the meta classes in the game. Um, I always preferred Mesmer to Guardian from day one because I felt it had more nuance to its gameplay, and I really liked using Temporal Curtain, which is one of those skills that I think uh, rewards people who are creative and can like think on their feet and whereas I felt Guardian was sort of the same role but it was a bit more brute forcey like wall of reflect reflects projectiles like there's not really a lot of a lot of interplay and a lot of game to it it just does what it does um so I uh I never really enjoyed Guardian as much um it felt like a more of a simpler class um so, uh, the Guardian, though, uh, I have geared him out, or her out, in full ascended, uh, armor and trinkets, uh, ascended greatsword, ascended focus, I think my fractal scepter is, uh, unfortunately just exotic, I'm not gonna bother, um, staff is exotic, mace is exotic, hammer is ascended, and sword's ascended, so he's got mostly ascended gear, uh, for the mo- and- character uh, does see a little bit of play in uh, does see a little bit of play in dungeons and fractals but I'm really not a fan of the class I don't I don't really enjoy playing guardian it's not a class that uh, excites me to log on and play but I'll play it when the group needs it so uh, and it is one of the main meta classes so I felt it was important to have it fully geared out with ascended. And incidentally, world completion 100%. I think a lot of people watched me live stream that world completion. I did it very quickly, like a week uh, of semi-hardcore world completion grind to get this guy done. Um, and so, yeah, that I mean, that's basically it for Guardian. There's not too much to say um, about that. Next character is my engineer. This engineer is fairly new. Um, I only started playing this character um, because I needed a Norn for the Emperor title, and I also needed an Engineer for uh, the tutorial uh, achievements. Um, but after playing the class a bit, I really started to enjoy it. I really, really liked it. Um, it's fun in dungeons. It has a very high, fast-paced, high APM gameplay. Um, as far as the character goes... The weapon, uh, the rifle, is ascended, and it has ascended trinkets. However, my armor, uh, besides my boot, which is ascended, which I got from a raider's chest in Fractals, the rest is all uh, exotic assassins. Um, I, don't, I don't main this character. I don't play it enough to, uh, especially in Fractals, to uh, invest in a full ascended armor set. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a fun class. Uh, I also carry uh, a set of... Giver's weapons and exotic sinister gear, and then ascended sinister 
uh, trinkets, except for, I guess, this earring and this ring are exotic still. But yeah, if, so I can play uh, some Condi Guard or Condi NG. Um, I haven't really done tried to do like a Condi NG, like Lupicus Solo or anything. But I have the stuff in case I ever do want to do it. Um, so that is it with my NG. I uh, don't really get to play it that much, but uh, yeah, it's a fun class and I definitely enjoy it. So now we'll get into my last three classes, which are my three favorites, my Thief, my Elliot, and my Warrior, and we'll get this knocked out. All right, so we have my Thief. Uh, my Thief is one of my favorite characters. Uh, I love the Silvari T3 medium uh, for both male and female. I think it's just a really amazing armor set, and it just looks super good. Um, I have the male Thief. Uh, I went with a Celestial and Pyre look, so he's just, like, super, like dark but bright at the same time like i don't know i just think it looks cool some people have said it looks like a bumblebee fuck them um that's their problem uh i think it's cool um the one thing that's really weird about this character is i originally made it because i finally got fractal daggers to drop in fractals and i was so happy that i finally got fractal fractal daggers and i and i hated my char thief so i wanted to make a thief so i could use fractal daggers um so I made this thief, I started playing it, and I was like, wow, I really like playing this character. This is one of my favorite characters. Um, I think this is really cool. So then I, of course, had to go out and make uh, Incinerator, the legendary dagger. Um, what, so basically, the only reason I created it was for fractal daggers, but then I liked it so much that I had to go out and make legendary daggers. And then even worse, I went out and made two incinerators because you can't play dagger dagger thief without two incinerators you just can't do it um then they came out with the wardrobe patch and i basically wasted all that gold on an incinerator that i could have spent on basically anything else um but i do have uh the title twice told legend which i wear on this character as sort of like a a badge of shame for having made two legendaries um yeah it would have it would I, I would love to trade one of those incinerators for anything else of any other legendary but that i don't have but it is what it is yo um so as far as his gear goes he is full ascended on the armor and the trinkets uh, full ascended short bow sword dagger uh i have my incinerator I have two i have an undead Ascended. I have uh, my regular incinerator. Um, have a f ascended knight pistol. I have an exotic pistol for undead slaying and an exotic dagger for perception stacking for like uh, boss solos. Um, but yeah, that's that's about it. I I definitely enjoy playing this character. Um, the only thing I can really say negative about this character is that. In my guild, we have people who are main thief who are way, way, way better than me at thief. Um, and as a result, I don't get to play this character as much as I could because whenever we do dungeons and stuff, if there's someone who's a main thief and is really good at thief better than me, I'm not going to uh, like let. I'm not going to try to play thief ahead of them. So yeah, I don't get to play this guy as much. Um, and moving on to my Ellie, which uh, this character is about three or four months old, but it's basically already my second main because of how often I've been playing it. Um, like I said about Thief, it's really remarkable how uh, quickly you fall in love with a character that you thought you hated just by changing the aesthetic. When I had that Silvari Elementalist, I thought I hated Elementalist, I really did. I was not a big fan of the class. I finally get an Elementalist that I like the look of, and all of a sudden, my Elementalist is one of my favorite class. So I really went all out for this guy. I have full Ascended Armor, Ascended Trinkets, Assassin's Earrings. I have an Incinerator. I have, I've gone out and made the Minstrel. I made Meteorologicus. Um, and I have Ascended Staff. So it's basically full Ascended. Uh, everything is ascended on this character. It's uh, definitely a character I enjoy playing quite a bit, and I wanted to gear it out. Um, I wasn't. I originally was just going to make the minstrel because I like dagger focus uh, so much in PVE, but I had like plenty of gold extra, and I had a map completion done. So I figured, hey, why not just 
go ahead and make a uh, Meteorologicus. Um, I've done sort of like an, uh, a legendary showcase on this character when I when I made these things, but yeah, I uh, I consider this character like my second main now, so I didn't mind going out and investing in legendaries for it. I think uh, it's worth doing, and I enjoy having um, the legendaries on it. It's definitely a character I I dig a lot, and so that's basically it uh, for my Ellie. And lastly, we will get to my warrior, which is definitely my main, as most people are aware. Um, warrior uh, is where I keep most of my legendaries. Of the 11 legendaries I have, I keep 7 of them on my warrior. Um, the warrior has quite a bit of stuff. Um, in addition to 7 legendaries, um, it has 4 ascended sets of armor. It has a strength set, a scholar set, it has the sinister set, and it has a rabid set for World v. World. So this character alone has four sets of ascended armor. Um, in addition to that, I have a ton of ascended weapons. I don't even, I, I don't really have a particular count, but it's got a bunch of ascended weapons and even more in the bank for my sinister and rabid set. Um, I actually made an ascended hammer for, I'm actually not even sure why I made an ascended hammer, but I did, I guess, for like world v world but i don't know i don't really if i world v world roam i do it on my rabbit set so i don't know why i have an ascended hammer but i figured i can't have this is my ocpd i can't have one ugly ass exotic sitting in my in my inventory it's got to be either full ascended or just not have one um so this character besides just the gear uh of which actually let me go through and show i have eternity bolt howler uh, Frostfang, the Moot, um, and let's see, and Kamohalo Kotaki are my legendaries that I keep on this warrior. So yeah, uh, definitely pimped out. In addition to all that, I have the Black Lion mining stuff. That way, just because I don't want to have disposable stuff, I want the permanent stuff on my warrior. Only the best for the warrior. Um, in inventory, inventory is packed full of stuff. I have like every conceivable, like potion. I have like all this kind of crazy random stuff, like watchwork portal devices, star of gratitude, armor repair canisters, even revive orbs. I don't know. I just kind of filled up its inventory with anything useful. Um, additionally, I have even crazier stuff. I have a silver fed salvage matic, which is insanely wasteful. I have a copper fit salvage matic which is about the best thing ever. Um, I have my Royal Terrace Pass, which is super useful. And anytime that the permanent Royal Terrace Pass is available in the gem store, I always advise people to get it because it's super awesome. And in addition to that, I went super crazy and I have a permanent Merchant Express, a permanent Black Lion Express, a permanent Bank Express, and craziest of all, a permanent self-style hair kit. Uh, which will allow you to change your hair on the fly whenever you want. Um, and it was like the most unnecessary purchase of all time since I only use one hairstyle. But that's the way it goes. Um, basically, my warrior is my most complete character. Um, basically, anything conceivable that makes sense to buy for it, I've bought for it. Um, there's a couple legendaries I don't have. Like, I don't have either of the ranged weapons. I don't have the hammer. I don't have the shield. I don't have the harpoon gun. Um, but those weapons really aren't used ever in the dungeon meta. And uh, I think it's safe to say that if a balance patch ever came out where any, which made any of those things used in the dungeon meta and those became like meta things, I would probably go out and make those too. Um, so yeah, that's basically it for my characters. Um, I wanted to end this with... Uh, a with like an account summary where I nail down uh, and add up everything uh, that I've done statistically with the characters. All right, so I have purchased in total uh, 33 bag expansion slots. Across all my characters, I've purchased 33 additional bag slots. Um, I've crafted 11 legendary weapons Eternity, which counts as two. 
Frostfang, Moot, Bolt, Howler, Kamal Howler, Kotaki, two Incinerators, Meteorologicus, and the Minstrel. Across all my characters, I have crafted 34 Ascended Weapons in addition to my Legendaries. I have crafted 8 sets of Ascended Armor, 5 Heavy, 1 Medium, and 2 Light. I have purchased 27 Ascended Earrings, and I have crafted 13 Ascended Back Pieces, and I have purchased 16 Ascended Amulets. Um, I have played my warrior, this warrior, for 3,673 hours over 671 days. And across all my characters, I have played for 7,273 hours over the past 896 days. Um, let me see. I have died in total 5,266 times. So that is it, guys. This has been super long. Anyone who's still here and still awake, thanks for watching.